program template. How do I write the programs now? So from the procedure division perspective, the first statement point one should be your uh, display statement. Para one. In that your program name started. Okay. This is the first primary thing you have to do. Okay. Second one will be uh, initialization. Initialization refers to opening the files, opening the cursors if it is a DB2. Apart from that, assigning an initial values for your file variables, the switch variables, okay. all the variables that do not have any initial value, you should make sure that all the variables that you're going to use have an initial value like space, zero, yes or no, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes or no. This is your installation step. Mm -hmm. Something like you'll write like this perform. Uh, for form 1000 initial para to 1000 exit like this you will be writing one time step okay mm -hmm. this is a one time step or in a simple way i can write in a better approach way this is statement and this is the detail okay our second step okay my third step in this case is to get one record for form 2000 get input para to 2000 exit here get the input get inputs if it is files if it is maybe table if it is minus way manual accept statement as well get only first record get only first record don't set a loop on getting the records okay mm. remember this point here cobol can process or hold only one record at a time the set of memory variables that you allocated can hold only one record at a time mm. that means before you process first record if you read the file or table second time it will overwrite the first record. Correct. So you need to read, process, send the record and go and get the next record. Mm -hmm. So before you start the process, first you get one record. Okay. Again, here you will be having a thought of seeing whether the file is empty or not. Yes. If there are no records, then you don't need to continue the process, right? You can just come out of the program. Correct. So that's how you will need to write the template. Now, assuming that you have a record, what you have to do, you need to start the process. Process para through 3000 exit. Now this you put it in a loop. It until end of inputs some switch like this. Can you tell how many records will be in a input file or a table for the day? Mm -hmm. so. if, if I say that, for example, if I say that today you'll get or tomorrow you get five records as input. Okay. Then we can write perform five times in tax. Mm. But I would say that next day you'll get 10. Okay. That case, we cannot every day keep on changing the program frequency of loops, right? Yeah. So what we do is we don't put a loop on a number wise. We put a loop on a condition. Uh -huh. The condition is always to set a loop till the end of inputs. Yeah, end of input, end of five. Yeah. Okay. End of inputs always remember end of inputs whether it's a file or a table whichever is acting as input based on that we will take a proper variable name and we'll put a proper condition there okay sir till the okay. end of the input only your loop should continue okay Correct. yes and like i told in yesterday's or previous class 
this is the only loop that you should be concentrating primarily. This is the first and the last loop for a lot of programs. Hmm. Out of 100 programs, one or two may have separate two or three loops, but 90 programs or 95 programs will have only one loop and that will be the process loop. Okay. Okay, you got it? Yes. Now, in the process para, okay, in the process para, the very first step is to audit. Audit the data. Some programs, yes, some programs, they don't do. Okay. Auditing in the sense whether you got the data or not. Okay. Whether you got a proper data or not. For mm -hmm. example, you are processing claim data. Okay. On a given day, you got some thousand claims from different different customers. Okay. In one of the claim, on the claim audits, we generally check whether the claim amount is greater than zero or not. Mm. By mistakely or by another reason the data may be wrong. Yes. So what we do, we need to audit and process only which they are fit. Hmm. Okay. So auditing is whether the data is given or not, whether that again in the claim, they should mention what is the policy number. Yes. If that is not given, if the policy number is not given, I would doesn't know how much amount of insurance he has whether the insurance is in within the liable time or not, all I should tick it, right? Yes, correct. So when we get inputs, we get input from different agencies, different screens, different routes. Hmm. Some places, somewhere, the data will not be as expected. Yes. So when we write the program, we will think in that way. And first we do audit to check whether we got proper data or not. Hmm. Then yes if we got proper data then apply the business logic okay apply business logic in here what you will be applying the if conditions the primary one calculations calculating the dates calculating the amount all these things here filtering specific some records you are filtering other records you are skipping away Based on the business logic, you will apply the conditions and calculations filtering over here. This is the place where your skill will come for developing. Mm, right. That is done. Then you need to move the data from input to output. This way, this is the place where move statement will play the role. Okay. Yes, sir. This is the place, these two places. A and B is the place where your if conditions will play the role. Correct. C will be the place where your move statements will work again, morely. Then D is to send the output data to file or a table. Hmm. On step three, okay, as of step three, you got one record. In step four, you have processed one record. Now what you do is, this is primarily important, go and get next record. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till end. Because you set a loop over here. Yes. Sir. First you get one record, process it and go get second record. If there is a second record, it won't be end. So it will process again the same steps. If it is there is a third record, process in same steps, four, five, six till end. When it reach end, it will check. Yes, it's time to come out of this loop. Hmm. In that case, fifth is the perform 4000. This para is very not much important. You can write directly the statements also. Okay. This is to close the files or cursors and display counters. You can write them all in here itself or you can write in a separate para. Okay. How many records came in, how many records went out, all this you can write. And finally, you can simply tell that go back. Uh -huh. 
in this entire structure okay in this entire structure you take 100 programs only okay only a and b are the ones which will be changing correct okay rest all programs will fall with the same pattern with all statements with more of the same statements Okay. A and B are the places that will change based on the data that you are supposed to be processing based on the requirement given to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody gave you claim data, somebody gave you policy data, somebody gave account data, somebody gave trade data, sales data, what are the data? Audit as per the data, apply the logic as per the business. Once that record is processed, move, send out, get, get next record. Okay. You need to remember this template. This is called a modular structuring. So what it is called modulus. Modular. modular. Okay. Because we are not writing the programs in a line of sequence. We are preparing them in a modules like this. Okay. This is how you're going to write your paragraphs. This is called of course, I missly missed the main part, the main para and the main paras. These are your major statements. These are your minor logics. 1000, 3000, everything will be coming here, bottom. Right? Yeah. Now, in this one, there is one more structuring, standard structuring you need to note here is the paragraph numbering. Okay. It's not that I have finally given thousand and ten or two thousand or three thousand. It's part of your game in the program. Your mm -hmm. main para will start with zeros. Okay. And paragraphs in main para will start with thousands. Whatever the paragraph you are calling from main para from here. They all will start with thousands. Fine. And any para that you are calling in the thousand paragraphs, like three thousand, you may call audit para. Mm -hmm. In that case, you need to go for five hundred, uh, the hundred series, like this. So if it is 3000, you are calling another para, then it should be the 100 series from 3100 till 3900. And if you are calling any paragraph in 3200, again, any para within 3200 as a sub paragraph, you should be using 10 series now. That means 3210 till 3290. Oh. And anything beyond that, okay, if you are calling 3210 is calling another number, another para, then you should go by single digit numbers. 3210 1 till 3210 9. Got it? Because let's say I am analyzing or I have an issue in something like 3340 para name. If I'm analyzing this paragraph, in my mind, I already know that this control came from 3000, 3300, and then 3340. Hmm. This is again 000, main para. So in main para, the control moved to 3000. In 3000 paragraph, the control came to 33. In 33, the control sent to 3340. So I know the sequence of my control already now. Mm, okay. The number is not a joke here. Okay. The numbers mm. are not at all a joke. As in when you call a sub paragraph, as in when you're creating a paragraph, this numbering will be change their levels. Thousands, hundreds, tens, units. Correct. Okay. This is not or shown or trained anywhere in Google. Okay, mm -hmm. you never know this point. You will know that you can write a modular program in Google. You may have heard a word called top-down approach in Google. 
okay there are okay. words of art writing this kind of programs they are called top down approach from top of your main para you will control all the minor paras okay modular okay. programming top down approach these are the famous words which uh, good programmers knows and this numbering part is what another tricky part to remember as well yeah actually right don't worry when i start making you to write some programs i'll give the numbering part that you should practice and then again i am telling you without you practicing without you practicing i cannot show you lot of things correct sir correct i can tell you like this but putting in them in practicals you need some hands on support correct so unless you do practicals i bet myself on that that you are not perfect in mainframe with even my training also mm -hmm. okay even i train you one of the best points which nobody trains you also no use unless you put them in practical correct so you are teaching this is perfect. not interview question okay these are not interview questions mm -hmm. okay these are not interview questions but yes these are important points that these are mentioned. how you write a program in the projects when you get a job mm. so again i'm telling you you will be training on both cases one for interview one for the job yes. today i can i train you only interview after interview i train you job that's not possible two level ways correct you need to catch all at once you need to know the structure of coding a program and you should know how to set up a program as an experience you are not going in a fresher resume my god please remember you are not a fresher yes your resume shares almost 3 or 4 years experience yeah so you should not fall into that fresher trap and go blindly to project okay again we'll come back to the more on details for now if you see the game perform plays the major role of controlling your entire program correct if you know perform if you know if if you know move statement i bet you can code or analyze any program better way than anyone mm hmm stall statements there are multiple statements okay there are hundreds of other statements that also we use in the program but not the game changers game changer are only these three important statements what we discussing for last three days yes so i going to show you some programs okay i don't want to in, in uh, go along at once all at points okay there are some points that i am just holding now so that you digest these points before we go to that points mm -hmm. okay covering this point is also a hectic one yeah these are difference okay which is for interviews okay like what is yes. inline what is outline is an in, a simple difference for interviews correct but understanding them using them is different when you write the program you should be seeing that you covered cover all these five points maybe we don't do audit so you can skip that maybe we are not moving or uh, writing to any file so we don't need to move like that maybe in some of our training programs we may not be accurately following this play out correct but in the project yes definitely definitely i'll i'll be showing that in our training analysis programs also some of the real time programs i'll give for analysis if you follow this template bigger to bigger program also makes very smaller because you don't need to analyze any of this part except these two fellows mm. you don't need to analyze at uh, 20 or 30 lines in initial para or somewhere like 3 or 10 lines in get back para or some 100 move statements or another statements of getting the data you mm. need to focus on the logic that written in these two places if you could identify these two places in your program that's it your analysis is almost nearby to complete hmm any program okay it's not for this program yes i got it i can show you hundreds of programs 
where you can use this template and just small modification you can image all the points there 